All right, as the family members are making their way over to our sophomores, I'd like to welcome everybody today to the campus of Cal Poly Humboldt and the Redwood Bowl for our final regular season home football matchup today featuring the College of the Siskiyous and your College of the Redwoods Corsairs. As a special recognition and a special tribute and thank you from our entire college, our entire athletic department, we would like to take the time to recognize all of the sophomores who have dedicated themselves to our program over these last two years, have done an outstanding job in representing our program, have done an outstanding job in citizenship, and have done an outstanding job on the field and in the classroom. We're gonna introduce each of them, and we're going to mention any folks that may be accompanying them today. We'll ask them to come through, walk through their teammates, and as we get them to about the 35 or 40 yard line, we will go to the next person on the list. First up, sophomore number one from Clarksburg, Tennessee, Dante Hurt. Dante is accompanied by Hugh and Mitchell, and Perla Ceballos. Dante plays wide receiver for our football squad. Next up, local Fortuna boy, number three, Levi Nyberg. Levi is a running back sophomore and he is accompanied today by his parents Patty and Matt Nyberg. Next up we have sophomore from Gresham running back number four, Emmanuel Igbongaguang. Emmanuel is accompanied by his mom and his sister. Next up is defensive back from Junction City, Oregon. Number five, Gabe Ward. Gabe is accompanied by his mom, Amy, his sister, Abigail, his niece, Ember, and his dad, Harvey. Next up is our sophomore from Vancouver, Washington, number seven, Mason Pretty. Mason is accompanied by his grandmother, Marilyn, his aunt, Mallory, his mom, and his mom, Carla. Next up, we have our quarterback, sophomore from Fortuna, Max Huff. Max is accompanied by Stacy and Mark Huff, his sister Hannah, his girlfriend Lupe, his brother Jacob, niece AJ, nephews Isaiah, Liam, and brother-in-law Cade. Sophomore quarterback, Max Huff. Next up is number nine, wearing number six today, sophomore quarterback from Arcata, Shane Purcell. Shane is accompanied by his mom, Margaret Lawson. Next up, we have wide receiver sophomore number 10, Nate Lopez. Nate is accompanied today by his parents, Susan and Steven Lopez. Nate came to us all the way from Cibola, New Mexico.
Next up, we have sophomore defensive back, number 11, Ojari Mosley. Ojari, I know you're accompanied by someone, but they, I don't have the list, so thank you, though, to the accompaniment of Ojari today. Ojari from Lake Mary, Florida. Next up, we have number 12, Tyrus Arakawa. Tyrus is from Hawaii, and he is accompanied by Clayton and Megan Arakawa. Next up, we have number 19, wide receiver from Clear Lake, California, Tyler Haskell. <laughs> Tyler is accompanied by Wendy and Ken Monfren and Rob Haskell. Next up is sophomore running back from Del Norte, California, Levi Cox Cooley. <laughs> Levi is accompanied by Levi and Danielle Cooley. Next up, we have sophomore defensive back number 24, Lane Brandstetter. Lane is from Ferndale, California, and he's accompanied by his parents, Lee and Chelsea, sister Macy, grandpa Sergio, and girlfriend Megan. Next up, we have sophomore defensive lineman number 25, Tice Wiggum. Tice came to us from North Las Vegas, Nevada, and he is accompanied today by his mom, Lauren Jones, and brother, Brendan Lofton. Next up, we have sophomore from Petaluma, California, number 28, Jack Hartman. And Jack is accompanied today by parents Joe and Lisa Hartman. Next up is sophomore defensive back number 29, Jay Jimenez from Arcata, California. He's accompanied by Aaron Moya, Juan Jimenez, Finn Jimenez, Encilio Jimenez, and Ella Day. Next, we have defensive lineman sophomore from Medford, Oregon, number 34, Jaden Sandusky. <laughs> Looks like Coach Coleman is accompanying Jaden today. Next up, we have defensive lineman sophomore from Eureka, California, number 41, Drew Jensen. Drew is accompanied today by his mom and dad, his grandpa, his brother, his girlfriend, Kylie, Benny, and family.
Next we have linebacker, sophomore from Crescent City, California, number 44, Tanner Fortner. Tanner's accompanied by Danny and Jamie Fortner. Next is sophomore linebacker number 47, Jacob Wong Oliveras from San Antonio, Texas. Jacob is also being accompanied by a coach today. Next up is sophomore linebacker from Eureka, California, number 54, Chase Stu. Welcome into the Redwood Bowl for the final regular season game for the College of the Redwoods. More Sarah's host, Joe, College Jenny, of the Siskiyous Austin, Eagles today. Houston, Eagles Susie. come in at 2-7 and seven on the season, but both wins have come in the past two weeks. Corsairs, meanwhile, sitting at 7-2, and two, looking to clinch a home bowl game here today. So welcome in my broadcast partner, Next Liam Warner. Liam, rain is coming down, and this is football line, weather in Humboldt County. Yeah, this is Rocha. perfect uh, weather for some football here in Humboldt County. It reminds me of the rainy nights Gabe watching the by his mom, football his team dad, play and his uncle. Uh, here at the Redwood Bowl. But it should be a good game. I mean, it, it, the thing is, it kind of has the makings of a trap game. I mean, College of the Siskiyous, they have really, really struggled. Uh, in their first seven games, they were outscored 297 to 76. But their last two games, they outscored their opponents 58 to 10. Next up is sophomore from Fortuna, California, right number 72, against. Joey Quinn. This is a team coming off as, uh, that has some really good momentum uh, coming into Joey's this game. I think it's really important that this Joe Corsairs team starts fast. Grandfather so it's sophomore day here. Ginger. Corsairs honoring their sophomores will be moving on with, from the program at the end of the season. Again, final regular season game here today. There will be a bowl game. It'll be December 2nd, uh, as you can hear in the upcoming interview with Liam with head coach Jason yeah, so White. He kind of details a little bit of that. Colorado, so we've got the interview five, coming up Darryl and then kickoff West. shortly. Again, Corsairs looking to move to 8-2 and two on the season, coming in off a big win, 76 nothing over Gavilan last weekend. Yeah, but this is a Siskiyous team, Liam, 44 nothing over De Anza, a team that Corsairs, I mean, if you want to look at just scores and matchups, 32-6, to six, uh, you're, you're getting a... You know, should be a good matchup if you're looking at recent history. Over the over the course of the season, you might have a little different opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it, this is a Siskiyous team that, uh, you know, offensively... Next, we have sophomore wide receiver number 89, Sean LaChapelle. Uh, he's thrown more interceptions and touchdowns. From Milwaukee, so Oregon. The case the last two Sean's opponents. accompanied by his mom, uh, Lindsay, his like brother, said, Nick, I, and sister, team, Andrea. They have to be careful, uh, because uh, unlike Gavilon last week, who just struggled the entire season, they were completely outmatched. This is a Siskiyous team that has been playing really well uh, coming into this game. Um, and so, like I said, it, it's really it, all the things that CR has had issues Next with. Next we have sophomore from Utah, California, number 91, Frederico uh, really Delgado. To, to get off on the right foot and play a clean football game today. It's going to be a little more Frederico is uh, accompanied to play by Savannah. Savannah. To wrap up Orlando, sophomore day activities, Siskiyou is getting Delgado. ready to enter the field. We'll take a 30-second timeout. On the other side, Liam's interview with head coach Jason White. Then kickoff here on ESPN 107.3 FM, 1340 AM. And last but certainly not least is number 99, Marcus Irby from Freeburg, Illinois. He's accompanied today by girlfriend Hannah Smith. Son Amias Irby. Once again, let's give a huge round of applause for all of our sophomores and all of their accomplishments over the course of these past two seasons here at College of the Redwoods. Thank you to all the families and friends who showed up today for our, our special announcement. Well, they also don't want to get on the bus again. One, two, three.
City College Athletic Association decorum statement and decorum policy is in effect. Fans, the California Community College Athletic Association decorum policy for all games throughout this event, please be respectful and courteous to each other. The CCCAA strongly encourages all fans to avoid using any profane language, taunting, or making any inappropriate gestures or nonverbal signs. In addition, any non-credentialed person that interrupts play will immediately be escorted out of the venue by our security staff. Those violating the 3C2A decorum policy will be warned once. Subsequent violations of the, the CCCA policy will result in an ejection from this host venue. Thank you all. At this time, we would ask everyone to please rise if you're able for the playing of our national anthem. So five and a half? Five fifteen. Oh yeah, we were right on time. We're just running early. Said okay, but no time. See, this time it's not the auto file, it's fine. Number five, Dave Ward takes the pitch to start this action off. 
College of the Siskiyous won the toss, deferred their option to the second half. Corsairs starting off with the ball here, opening kick, line drive returned out by Gabor to the 28-yard line. And that's where the Corsairs, led by sophomore quarterback being honored on sophomore day, Max Huff, taking over the offense. Coming out with Levi Cox Cooley, another sophomore who's broken off this really the second half of the season, just completely come alive. A Corsair's rushing attack that was non-existent at the start. Three wide receivers, play action to Cox Cooley. Huff back to pass. Wind is absolutely hammering down as Huff rolls out to his right. He's going to take a loss on the play. It's going to be tough football weather to throw in here today, Liam. Uh, yeah, the wind is blowing right in here. It is raining sideways. <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of these guys, especially the locals, should be used to it. But I do want to say Max Huff, Last week against Gavilon, he tied the school record uh, for touchdowns in a game with five. And with his first touchdown last week, broke uh, the school record for career touchdowns. So uh, he is he had a great game last week, and he's had a great career uh, here at College of the Redwoods. So being honored on sophomore day, definitely going to be in the record books for several years to come. Trips bunch left, second down and 14 upcoming. Give is to Cox Cooley, looking for a seam, trying to cut it back over the right side, and ball's on the ground. Are they going to say he was down? Yes, so a one-yard gain by Levi Cox Cooley, but it's third down and 13 to Liam. This is the antithesis of what you said the Corsair's starting drive should look like. Yeah, I mean, they need to start fast, but it's really important, especially in this weather, to hold on to the football. I mean, you know, Absolutely. It, the, the Corsairs, even though some of them might be used to the weather here in Humboldt County, they have not played in these kinds of conditions yet this season. I mean, this is the nastiest weather that we've had all season for a game. So they, they, they might not be used to, you know, really needing to take care of the football and hold on. And we just need to be mindful of that. 13 and a half to go in the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero ball game. College of the Redwoods. College of the Siskiyous from the Redwood Bowl. Max Huff, empty set. Two receivers right, three left. Looking right. Going to take a shot down the right side for Hurt. And defender got there right as Hurt went to make it. Pass goes in complete fourth down. Well, it looked like as soon as he threw that ball, there was a wind gust that just blew against the football uh, going down the field and might have changed the path a little bit. So Corsair's going right to left as we see it again from the home side of the Redwood Bowl. Wind started out going right to left with the Corsairs, and then it's flipped, it's gone against it, and now it's kind of calmed down. So it's going to be swirling, not a major advantage going the other way, but Liam, just like you said, got to hold on to the football. Yeah, really important in this kind of game. Ryan Thomas on to punt, gets it away, and a good kick considering the conditions. It's going to be fielded inside the 40 and immediately tackled. I believe it was Gabe Ward who got in there with the stop, but the Siskiyous Eagles will take over at their own 38-yard line, their first offensive possession. Yeah, like I said, uh, the Siskiyous team, you know, they, they turn the ball over a lot, not nearly as much as uh, Gavilon did, uh, but they do have a minus four turnover di differential. They've taken the ball away 14 times. They've given it away 18 times. Um, the quarterback wastes uh, Saluskin, he has five touchdowns, six interceptions. So it's another game where potentially the Redwoods defensive backs can, can eat. Corsairs. Starting 11 on defense out on the field. Again, the strong point of this team all season long. Going to need to lean on them today. Direct snap to the running back going over the right side. And Gabe Ward coming up, able to make his tackle after a gain of four. So Skyler Crane, the running back, getting the first snap on a direct snap. So a little bit of trickery. I mean, Siskiyou's a team that's got to try to keep the, keep the Corsairs on edge a little bit. Yeah, they have really good momentum and, and a lot of confidence coming into this game with their last two wins against Yuba and, of course, that 40 40 nothing win over De Anza last week. So, it's Redwood's defense. they got to be ready. It is not it, it is not going to be like the game against Gavilon at all. This is a team that could beat you if uh, you're not careful. Just over 12 to go, 0-0 zero, zero first quarter. Siskiyous. And a direct snap again, running right. Penalty marker comes in. It's going to be a loss of two. Skyler Crane again with the direct snap. And haven't seen Saluskin out on the field yet. And Liam, I know we don't have a ton of information, but it'd be interesting if he was dealing with an injury, if they're going to have to resort to more of a leading on the run game quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, he, he did play in their last few games. That's why I expected him to be out here today. But, yeah, it could be, you know, whatever circumstances, there could be a different quarterback out there. Great 
for a call in the penalty flag. Calling offense number 54. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, third down. So Coach Jason White's going to opt to take the loss of three, so it'll bring up third down and eight. 12 minutes to go. Again, 0-0 ball game just getting underway alongside Liam Warner, Mitchell Manji. We're going to do the final regular season game of the Corsairs year, trying to move to 8-2 and two on the season. Siskiyou's moving left to right as we see it. Visiting team in the road whites, navy blue helmets, navy blue pants, Corsairs, all black home uniforms. And another direct snap to Crane. Crane moving left, spins out of a tackle, but he's going to lose more yards. Ball's on the ground and looks to be... Can't tell who got it. It looked like a Corsair defender had an opportunity, but it might have been one of the Eagles' offensive linemen who was able to jump on it, and that is going to be the case. The fumble recovered by Andrew Buska, freshman from Hillsborough, Oregon. And Liam, a team that we talked about, I mean, we kind of heard it through sophomore day, but both of these schools, Northern California, got a lot of kids from the state of Oregon out here today. Yeah, a lot of guys are coming down the I-5 corridor uh, to play for Siskiyou's in the Weed, Wairika area. Mason Pretty's going to be the return man. Good snap. A little bit of pressure on the Corsairs. Spiraling kick, going to be fielded by Pretty at his own 32. Cutting back right, penalty flags come in. Close sideline as... Pretty lost the ball on the way down. Again, penalty markers down, and they're going to say Pretty lost it, and it was recovered by Siskiyou's. Man, it, you know, that, that's the thing that you really, <laughs> that's really going to kill uh, the Corsairs early. I mean, turning the football over, committing penalties. Uh, they, you know, if this call to the Siskiyou's team can get off to a fast start and get their confidence going, I mean, it, it could be a tough game for the Corsairs. So again, referees are going to determine the penalty. Initial call on the field was a fumble, and that's what they're getting set up for. So it'll be recovered by Siskiyous. During the return, holding number 54 of the return team, a penalty is declined, resulting in a first down for Siskiyous. So penalties and turnovers, Liam, those have been the two killers for this Corsairs team. And we've seen both of those already in the first two drives. Yeah, on the same play. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. I mean, like I said, it, you know, it, Mason Pretty, he has not really had to field any punts in this weather before. Um, and, you know, just might not be used to the conditions. So Siskiyous takes over at the Corsair 45. And a direct snap this time. It's Marcus Ledesma going over the left side. Good for two. So, Liam, I'm going to operate under the impression that they are without starting quarterback Wade Saluskin today. And so we're going to see, uh, it looks like, a variety of running backs here taking carries but I mean in the weather it's you know with the rain and the wind coming down here it's not exactly opportune passing opportunities you know that way either so leaning on the run game wouldn't I don't I wouldn't say you necessarily pick a day to have your store car starting quarterback go down but if you did this would be the type of weather to run the ball in. yeah and I think their other quarterbacks uh hasn't been in the game either Taylor Lone um so I think this whoever's a quarterback today has not taken any snaps under center yet this season according to their stats so again direct snap to a different running back this time up the middle and gain of three so they're running almost like a quarterback power up pretty much every single play where it's a direct snap to the running back he's going left to right they're blocking inside so stacking the line of scrimmage two three yards that one gets three so under 10 to go, nine and a half left. First quarter, 0-0 ball game. Eagles and Corsairs from the Redwood Bowl. Again, just want to remind you, we'll be cutting live right after the game to join J.B. Mathers with the Cal Poly Humboldt men's basketball game. That's going to tip off at 3.30 p.m. So at the conclusion of our game here from the Redwood Bowl, we'll send it over to J.B. for Cal Poly Humboldt and Cal State Maritime. Doubleheader. Little reverse doubleheader from Lumberjack Arena. Men at five at 3:30. Women play at 5:30. Direct snap is lost in the backfield by Tyler Johnson. Again, Johnson, another player listed as running back. So we've seen Tyler Johnson, Skylar Crane, Marcus Ledesma, all get direct snaps, all listed as running backs on the roster. Yeah, it makes me think that they don't really have a quarterback today, <laughs> um, which is really you tough. Me both. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really tough not to have a quarterback, especially in this weather. I mean. You know, it's, it's already hard enough uh, when you've got an experienced quarterback out there to deal with the rain and the wind. And, 
interested to see how this goes. Obviously, this is not going to be the cleanest football game. There's been a lot of fumbles and balls on the ground. and Yeah, with field position gained off of turnovers and a lot of running, you know, not a super clean ball game so far. Looking like we're in for a Big Ten West type football yeah, game. Yeah, right. Brady out to field the punt and he faked out the defenders. He goes on the opposite side and it'll trickle into the end zone. So, touchbacks, it's a cerebral play there by Mason. Pretty lets the ball go into the end zone. No return opportunity. It's going to be moved out to the 20 yard line. James running the football with your quarterback. Yeah, I mean, that's a great play call in this weather because, you know, in this weather, you don't want to do any, you know, big trick plays, you know, throw the football down the field. I mean, Max Huff is really good at that, but at least to start the game, you just want to keep it simple. It was a perfect play call. Just run Max Huff up the middle. He's been great at that all season, and he got a big game there. And just letting him read that defensive end, defensive lineman. You know, if they go with the speed sweep guy, he's pulling it. So smart read there from Huff. Guanabom the back to his left. Huff tries the hard count, and you're going to get an offside call. Something Huff's been a master at all season long, getting up to the line. And then you got to give credit, too, to the offensive line, maintaining the discipline to not jump on that Five. hard count. Defense number 44, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Since made contact with an offensive lineman, offsides will be the call. It'll shut the play down. So it'll be first and five coming up. Corsair is out across midfield for the first time today. Ball will be spotted out at the 48-yard line. Eagles defensively run three down linemen, four linebackers, four DBs. That's their base set. Three receivers bunch tight left. Snap. It's going to be a handoff to Iguanamon. Iguanamon over the right side. Contact the line of scrimmage. Fights through. Still fighting. A couple yards short of the first down, but Emmanuel Guanabon with a tough run. First and five becomes second down and one as we under seven here to go in the first quarter. Zero zero ball game. Yeah, this is going to be a game where the running backs obviously are really important with the weather. Uh, Bondaguam is just so good all season at just those tough physical runs. And then, of course, Levi Cox, Cooley, he's great because he's kind of the opposite. He's a little more shifty, he's small, he can fit into those tight spaces. So great tandem of running backs here for the Corsairs. Three receivers left, one right. It's Aguirre, the lone man on an island. It's going to be a handoff. Cox Cooley cuts it back. He's got a block from Aguirre over the right side. First down and more. Across the 40, down close to the 35-yard line. So Corsairs getting the ground game going on the second drive and able to hold on to the football. Yeah, those last two plays showed exactly what I said. I mean, Abonaguam is carrying defenders down the field, and Cox Cooley kind of just working that sideline and, and getting away from defenders and getting a nice game. Well, and having a, a healthy, stable running backs with a, with a Huff a, a able to keep it as well, it keeps everybody with fresh legs, too. So you can keep, get a, get a fresh body in there. It's right a little in extra energy. Five running backs scored last week, too. Hand off of Guanabon. Makes a man miss. Makes another man miss. Fighting towards the first down. He's got it. And Siskiyou's wrapping up. And Guanabon's still fighting forward. He got about an extra five yards there as the Eagles defensive players we're trying to rip the ball loose. We've got an injured Corsair down on the field. And we'll take a 30-second timeout right here on ESPN 107.
and 10 from the 15 yard line. Five and a half to go, first quarter. Corsair zero, Eagles zero. Play action, fake for Huff. Huff, plenty of time to throw. Directing traffic now, trying to run up the middle. And somebody lost a helmet out there on the field. Huff's gonna get credit for a three yard gain. Really wanted to throw that though, Liam. I, you, you could tell he did not want to run it. Yeah, he was looking down the field, with good coverage by Paul's with the Siskiyou's defense. And, you know, it's those situations where the quarterback's running with the ball and, and the rain, and you, know, you worry about a fumble, but he did a good job holding on to that football. So second down and seven upcoming. Ball spotted at the 13 yard line. You know, alongside Liam Warner, Mitchell Maji. Final regular season game here for the Corsairs, hosting College of the Siskiyous from the Redwood Bowl. We've got a full day of sports here on ESPN Radio. Again, Corsairs right now. Cal Poly Humboldt men's basketball tipping off at 3.30, and the ladies at 5.30 right next door at Lumberjack Arena. Off in the pistol set, three receivers tight right, and a little bit of a counter to Iguanabom. He's got space. Iguanabom, 10-5, touchdown, Corsairs. <laughs> and he went untouched from 13 out into the end zone for six. Well, usually Emmanuel Bonaglum is carrying defenders into the end zone. I think that was one of the easiest touchdowns he's had all season. Great blocking by the offensive line, obviously, and a great start. And good patience to let the let the hole develop, let the play develop, but just a really well-drawn-up play by Coach Jason White and the CR offensive staff. So Ryan Thomas is going to be on to attempt the PAT. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. in favor of the Corsairs 439 to go in the first quarter as Ryan Thomas got set to kick it away this one was blown dead and I believe we have a timeout on the field the kick. Come out. out of the season last week against Gabla. Well, yeah, I mean, and that was a huge goal for head coach Jason White. I mean, they had not, since the revival of the program um, last season, they had not had a shutout yet. So it was a really big deal uh, for this Corsair team to get that shutout against Gabalon. And they got close. They had the six against De Anza. Again, a late touchdown there. I think that was the closest one. I think there was another one where they had a, a few low-scoring games. But again, defense is predicated on the on the front seven. Kick away from Thomas is going to be fielded at the 10-yard line. Cutting back to his left. Big hit there across the middle of the field and then tripped up across the 30, going down at the 31-yard line. This Quaff Poe, return man for the Eagles, and we'll see this Eagles offense again. Without their, again, we're operating with limited information, but from what we can see, operating without at least Waste Saluskin, the starting quarterback for this Eagles team, and we have not seen a backup either. It's been running backs getting direct snaps, so a ground and pound attack for this Eagles team today. Well, and according to their stats, they have two players who have, who have passed the football for them, Way Saluskin and Taylor Lone, uh, number 14, and it looks like neither of them um, are, with, are on the field today so far. 
Direct snap this time goes to Demetrius McKilly. McWilly, excuse me, goes across the outside. Good for two to three yards. And it's wide receiver, it's Craig Adara. So he's the one who's getting under center. And then he motions right to the guard or the tackle and then ends up being a lead blocker on the play. So it's a little bit of trying to create the element of confusion. Is it going to be a direct snap to a wide receiver, direct snap to the running back? Either way, try to pack the line and at least get blockers for whoever's running the football. Yeah, I mean, this could potentially, you know, work against a CR defense who's really good at taking the football away via the air. But, I mean, you can't really get any interceptions if the ball never goes into the air. So, I mean, they, they just have to stay vigilant and be really good against the run today. Motion over by Adara. Direct snap again to McWillie. McWillie trying to find room on the right side. Not much there. Forced out of bounds. Mason Pretty coming up from the safety spot to make the tackle. And Pretty, another one of the sophomores honored here today, and he's made huge contributions to this Corsair football program. He is part of a great CR defense. I uh, believe they're at 21 interceptions on the season, um, which is just really, really incredible. Uh, a bunch of ball hawks. You know, you've got Mason Pretty. Jack Hartman had two interceptions last week. Uh, Brand Stetter had an interception last week. He's been one of the stars of the defense. And we said it over and over. All three levels of this Corsair defense, they work together really well from the front, the linebackers, and the DBs. Direct snap. And tackle on the play made by Tanner Forkner. I believe a gain of two. So Marcus Ledesma got the carry. So it's going to be fourth down in a yard. You'd have to imagine, given the situation, all spotted at their own 41-yard line. Eagles are probably going to go for this, especially considering that they, they can only run the ball on offense. Yeah, and I mean the other thing about the CR defense too is they're really a, a really good tackling team. I mean, you know, you don't see this of course their defense miss a whole lot of tackles, especially one on one. They've been incredible. So I misspoke. It was not Craig Adair. It's Brett McKee taking the quarterback snaps, and he's going to keep it under center. Try to get it via the quarterback sneak. We'll see how close they go. I, it, visually, it didn't look like he got it, but I can't tell where the far linesman's coming in. It, it's all going to depend on the spot. Up the middle here, yeah, it, it was definitely like it open to get it. So Brett McKee able to sneak it and pick up the necessary yard to move the chains. Two and a half minutes to go. First quarter, Corsairs with a 7 0 lead. Courtesy of Emmanuel Iguanabom getting in from a 13 yards out. Siskiyou's team that without a quarterback today. So it's Brett McKee, the running back. The man under center. Seen a lot of direct snaps to running backs from the gun, but it's McKee calling the plays in the huddle. McKee under center. Two receivers, excuse me, two running backs behind him. He motions left this time. Direct snap goes to Ledesma. Ledesma over the left side with some blockers, but better response by the Corsair defense swarming to the ball. Looked like it was Marcus Irby, one of the few that got in there. Tice Wiggum as well in on the stop. Excuse me, not Irby, but Dominic Kofi in on the stop. So a loss of one on the play, second down and 11. Again, and just based on the fact that I haven't attempted to pass yet, I wouldn't expect one anytime soon necessarily, Liam. This might, might be a quick game the way this first quarter's going. Yeah, it feels like we're watching a military academy football game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, military academy football, Big Ten West. I mean, <laughs> we're right there with you. Second and 11, just over a minute to go in the first quarter. McKee motions right, direct snap to Ledesma, going up the middle, and good blocking there. He's able to get five out to the 46-yard line. Bring up third down and six. And Corsairs, again, a team, Liam, you mentioned it, try to get ahead early and then protect the lead. That's what they're trying to do here, early 7 nothing lead, and they're going to rely on the defense to stop the run, which has been one of the strengths. Obviously, you look at the interceptions number, you'd think the secondary is a strength, but they're just a well-rounded Corsair defense, and we've said it every weekend. Yeah, I mean, all three levels work together. I mean, the one game against Foothill, obviously a very good team. They kind of grounded them into submission. Key motions out of the backfield, direct snap to Ledesma. Looked like he wanted to pass, took a big hit there, stayed on his feet and went down. Dominic Kofi got the first lick, and a flag now comes out. It was Chase Steubing who came in and delivered the blow with the shoulder after he was tied up around the ankle. He hadn't gone down in no
Forkner, or excuse me, Tice Wiggum had... And I do want to say, it looks like the officials are having a conversation about this on right. the near side of the field. But so, so just to, just to kind of rewind for a second, it was a direct snap to Ledesma. He rolled out right. Pressure came. Look, couldn't decide if he wanted to throw or run. Wiggum had him around the ankle, and then Dominic Kofi came and delivered a big hit. But he never went down. He just kind of spun around to the side. And then after that was when Steuben came in, delivered the hit, and he finally went down. But there was no whistle that the play was blown dead. That's going to be the argument from the CR sideline. I get that it was he took two big hits and he was in a defenseless position. If you want to make that argument, I can I can listen to it a little bit. But it's still you're taught as a football player to play through the whistle. And again, I'm not gonna I'm not a referee. I'm not gonna argue necessarily that. But just from our visual here, nothing seemed malicious about the play. It looked like they were playing through the whistle. Yeah, I agree with you. It's it's you know uh, it, it's more the enforcement of the call that I'm kind of right. confused about because right. like you said, the the play was not blown dead at the. the Flag, I saw the flag was thrown before the play was blown dead, before right. I heard any whistles. So I'm not sure how you can call that out. So they're going to wind the clock, and that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. Score remains Corsair 7, Eagles 0. Eagles left first and 10 when we come back on ESPN. Made the four-hour, three-and-a-half-hour trip over from Weed, California, out on the I-5. Under center, McKee motions to the right. Direct snap goes this time to Tyler Johnson. Johnson with some tough running. And nice gain on the ground. Give him credit for seven over the right side. As bringing up second down and three. Kind of a, not, not necessarily similar, but... The Eagles are rotating in the running backs freshly, similar to how the Corsairs are. So they've run Ryan Thomas, Skyler Crane, Ledesma, McWilly, and McKee. So you've got five different guys who have already gotten carries today. And you mentioned last week, I mean, much different, but Corsairs had five guys get into the end zone in the running back position. All five of them scored. Yeah, and I mean, I, that's how you replace, uh, you know, ha not having a quarterback is by having to you know, rotate all three different running backs in there, try to trick plays, try to confuse this Corsair defense as much as possible. Direct snap goes over the head of Johnson. Ball's on the ground, still loose. Was he able to get it back? They had an opportunity to get it slipped out of his hands once, but he got it on the second time. So that's the danger when you're going under center right to a shotgun snap. That can be a tough transition from the center's position. Yeah, and it looked like that almost got away from the Eagles player and Corsairs almost recovered it, but they, they got it back. So a loss of eight on the play. It was second down and three. Now it's third and 11. A lot trickier spot behind the sticks here. We'll see if the Eagles try to get this back from the air, if they try to play for four downs. Lone wide receiver to the right side of the field. Motioning over right is McKee. Hard count. Direct snap Johnson. Johnson over to the left side. And Corsair defenders swarm into the football. Give him credit for a gain of three to four. They're going to say the ball popped out. I'm going to... Again, that's going to be after... Running back was down. We'll bring up fourth down and eight. Fourth and eight from the 41. Wind is picking up here. Rain has stopped for the moment. Still gray, overcast skies over the Redwood Bowl. Lights are coming on. Fourth down and eight for the Eagles. And keep the offense on the field. Ball spotted at the Corsair 41-yard line. Just under 13 minutes to go, second quarter. 
Corsair, 7-0 lead. Again, that was Emmanuel Guanabam who got into the end zone for six. And I'd imagine, given where the play clock's at, they're either going to let this one run out, take the delay game, or a timeout. And they will take the delay. So even if you're punting there, Liam, I don't really see the benefit of the delay of game, even if you're going to still kick it. Yeah, unless like, you got no hard count, they didn't even try to draw them off sides. Unless you got a punter that can just place that football perfectly. <laughs> We're about to find out. So move it from the 41 back to the 46. Fourth down and long. Punt team on for the Eagles. Getting Mason pretty. Standing at his own 10. Good snap, pressure coming, nearly blocked, ran into the kicker and a flag comes out and return man got decked off the fair catch. So both kicker and return man go down, flags at both ends of the field. We're gonna have to sort this one out. I'm gonna guess they're gonna offset and we'll play it again. Yeah, and hopefully it works out for the Corsairs in that way. But that's just frustrating, you know, to, to see these penalties, the personal foul and, you know, that you can control not running into the punter like that and, you know, to, to hit the punter. And y yeah, yes and no, though. Yeah, because, I mean, it does To depend. an extent, when you're putting that kind of pressure and going for the block, it is it is hard to stop. But I understand it's about the – it's like contesting a three in basketball. It's right. like you can go straight on, you run the risk of hitting to him, and you go to the side, you might force to stop. Here's the Personal call. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense number 92. Kick catching interference. Number four, those penalties offset, replay fourth down. Well, it's really good that those penalties offset because that was roughing the kicker, which would have been a 15 yard penalty. So offsetting penalties, will we wind it and try it again. As Ryan Travis comes back out, Mason Pretty back into the team. Ryan Travis, number three is the Hunter for the course, or excuse me, for the Eagles, standing at his own 40. Good snap, plenty of time to get it away, no contact, high kick, and fielded by Pretty at his own 11. Max up, and the Corsair offense is going to have 90 yards. They're just pounding the football up the middle over and over. Motion. Lopez coming across in a slant pass. Too low for Dante Hurt. And that's an example of it right there. First down incomplete. No time comes off the clock. And you're on to second down. So I guess the Corsairs will lean on the run game a little bit going forward. But, yeah, you got to give your defense a blow. As Coach Wheeler, we can see down there, he's got a whole defense kind of crowded around him on the sideline. And that's... Something I really like from the CR coaching staff, both offensively and defensively, they bring the whole unit together afterwards, talk with them on the side. Snap here, handoff to Guanamo over the right side, and a good tackle right away. Marcus Delgado, the linebacker, coming up to make the stop. Delgado, true freshman from Mount Shasta. Local kid from the College of the Siskiyou, so big stop. Right there, gain of one on the play. 11 and a half to go. Clock will keep running. Corsair, 7 0 lead, second quarter alongside Liam Warner, Mitchell Manji. Bringing you Corsair football, ESPN radio. A reminder we've got Cal Poly men's basketball coming up. That'll tip at 3 30 when the conclusion of this game. We'll send you on over live to JB Mathers at Lumberjack Arena. Three receivers left. Huff in the gun. Drops back. Looking left. Going to do a screen pass underneath the Guanabomb. Makes the first man miss. Breaks out of a tackle. And then it's Delgado right there again. So, Liam, that's just what I was saying right before. You cannot go three and out. Put the defense back out on the field. And Coach Wheeler breaks up the meeting that they had on defense as this team's going to get the ball, give the ball back to the Eagles. Yeah, and based on, you know, where they are on the field, you know, inside their own 20, uh, the College of the Siskiyou, you think, would get pretty good field position. And, 
Yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, as I was saying, the game against Foothill, they were just running it over and over. The CR defense is out on the field for most of the game. You really want to avoid that here because all they're pretty much going to do is run the football. Good kick away from Thomas, and it bounced back and hit a CR defender in the face. We've got a couple guys down and now pushing after the play. Man, I, I think, is that Jack Hartman? Can't tell. No, it looks like it might have been... Their quarterback it's Ben Brett McKee operating the huddle he lines up under center motions right behind the tackle direct snap goes to McWillie McWillie over the right side breaks free and only picks up three it looked a lot better initially as he was able to break a couple tackles at the line of scrimmage so McKee good for three second down and seven as we hit the 10 minute mark in the second quarter Corsairs Lead it by a score of 7-0. Again, a low-scoring affair. We've got a lot of wind, rain to start. It's cleared up right now. Knock on wood. Don't want to see that coming back down again. It was swirling earlier at kickoff and just absolutely dumping as sophomores were being honored pregame for sophomore day. Second down and seven. Four defensive linemen down for the Corsairs. McKee motions out right. Direct snap. It's time to McWillie. McWillie over the left side. He's got space across the 40 and brought down. But Demetrius McWillie on the direct snap going to the left side, able to get enough for a first down. Got eight, needed seven. Chains move. Gabe Ward in on the stop for the Corsairs there. Ball spotted now at the 38 yard line. Field position, Corsairs have only crossed midfield once. That was the drive that they scored. Siskiyou's been across midfield two or three times already, including this possession. You can see uh, we're sitting on the home sideline. A lot of people tra made the trip over from Weed, California, and a lot of people just trying to escape the rain, sitting on the visitor's sideline that's got the coverage. McKee under center, motions left, direct snap McWillie. McWillie cuts back left side and hit immediately and brought down. And it was Mo Leotawa. He's had a huge game last week against Gavilan. A couple sacks, tackles for a loss. He was all over. Played pretty much all four quarters, too, uh, among a defense that was trying to get some rotation in the second unit in there, third and fourth quarter. But it was Leotawa who had a spectacular day last Saturday. And he's able to get a stop here today, gain of one on the carry. 8.20 to go, second quarter. Corsair, 7-0. Again, no quarterback for Siskiyou's. They're operating with a host of running backs. Now motioning outside, right snap to Thompson, excuse me, to Johnson, and wrapped up, brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Dominic Kofi able to make the stop, loss of two on the play, bringing up third down and 11. So under eight, second quarter. We've got a three downs and a cloud of dust type football game going on a lot of ground and pound haven't seen a ton of passes haven't seen any passes through the air for the siskiyous again operating without their starting quarterback waste saluskin so it's been again brett mckee listed as a running back out of junction city he's calling the plays he starts under center for this one and takes the snap and only the him in the center moved <laughs> Uh, somebody had a miscommunication there, but because the ball was snapped. It's not a false start Nobody on the CR defense moved and he just kind of fell forward. They give him credit For a gain of one So quarterback sneak for McKee Ends up in a gain of one Yeah, no false start center center moved and everybody else went. it's as soon as the ball snaps. It's a live down so you might hear the false start sometimes watching football on the weekends. They go everybody but the center when every, center doesn't know the snap count. Well, this time the center didn't know the snap count, but 
because everybody else didn't move, it, the play still counts once the ball snapped. Bring up fourth down and 10 after the unconventional quarterback sneak. And again, play call runs all the way down. Around Lake Shasta, fourth down and 10 upcoming. Eagles are gonna go for it. Motioning right is McKee, direct snap, and nobody caught that one, it's across the 50, and just fallen on by running back Skyler Crane back at the 45 yard line. Couldn't have gone any better for the Corsairs there. Big mistake for the Eagles, and Corsairs will start in plus field position, and that's, in a game like this, it's seven nothing ball game. You start with the ball at the 40 yard line, you got Fourth down and 10. Nobody can throw the ball on the Eagles team. Even if they go three and out, much worse off for the Eagles. Play action for Huff. Huff dropping back. He's going to take a shot down the right side. He's got a man. It's Lopez. Oh, in and out at the 10-yard line. Diving for that one was Nate Lopez. He had an opportunity. Little strong on the arm there from Huff. And Lopez not quite able to run under it, but a great effort there nonetheless. So Lopez started in the slot. And he was on the side with Dante Hurt. So Hurt ran the post route across the middle of the field, took the safety corner with him, and underneath on the wheel route was Lopez. He was wide open. He had nobody within five yards, but the ball was just a little bit out in front of him. Couldn't pick it up on the diving catch. So second down and 15. Corsair, second time they've been across midfield. They lead it 7-0. Emmanuel Guanabon was the man who got in the end zone. Huff stands at his own 50, snap goes to Cox Cooley and pressure immediately in the backfield, no gain on the carry. Again, Marcus Delgado in to make the stop. He's been a huge part of this uh, Siskiyou's defense early on. So third down and 10. Again, remember, this is a Siskiyou's team. They might be 2-7. and seven. They've won their last two games, and they just pitched a shutout against De Anza last week. So a team here that... Obviously, has come around the second half on the season. Haven't gotten an opportunity to follow them as closely as the Corsairs, obviously, but things are looking up. So they've got, they're, they're still in this ball game with no quarterback. Huff standing in his own 50, three receivers right. Looking right, Huff pumps, steps up, escaping to his left. Got to get 10, he's got five wrapped up and driven out of bounds. First man there was Jahan King, defensive back. And gain of five, so bring up fourth down and five from the 40-yard line. Too far for a field goal. I'd imagine similar thinking to Siskiyou's on the last play. It's a little bit too close to punt. As Corsair's offense is going to stay on the field. Dante Hurt checking into the game at the receiver position. It'll be fourth down and five upcoming. Just under five minutes to go. In the second quarter, and Liam Warner coming up at halftime, going to run through the first half. Not a lot of scoring to touch on, a lot of running plays. So Liam will break it down with every single running back who's Come gotten on. a carry at halftime.
College of the Redwoods. Empty set for Huff, standing at his own 45 yard line, three receivers right, two left. Huff looking across the middle, trying to get it there to Lopez, complete across the 30, penalty marker down in the backfield. As Nate Lopez good enough for a first down, 15 yards on the crossing route. But the body language from Max Huff and the position of the flag on the field, it leads me to believe this one might be coming back. Offense number 70, 10 yard penalty, repeat fourth down. And it is a holding call against the offense. This one goes against Kale Kuska. And fourth down and five becomes fourth down and 15. And Brian Thomas is on to punt. So low scoring first half. Corsair is going to kick this one away. Adrian Barnett, the return man, freshman from Kirkland, Washington, going to be the returner. Fourth down and 15. Balls at midfield. Ryan Thomas standing just shy of his own 35. Good snap. A little bit of pressure. Able to get it away. Not a great punt from Thomas. Accustomed to what he's normally seeing. As that one does take a Corsair bounce though. Goes from the 20. Rolls all the way down inside the 10. Where it will be down at the 9 yard line by Tanner Forkner. So 4 minutes 23 seconds to go in the second. in this first half, which is not usual for them, the way their defense really gets stopped. So credit to Siskiyou. Direct snap here to McWillie going over the right side. He's got five. And so this is just a game of smash mouth football. I mean, the College of the Redwoods defense knows that the ball is going to be run. They don't know left, right, but they know that the ball is going to be run at them. Now you got to go stop it. So Siskiyou's is basically, without a quarterback here, without their starter, as far as we know, that they're going to run the run the ball and basically say, hey, we've got three, four different running backs, five different running backs who can take carries, who can get reps, and we're going to lean on our big offensive line. And they've got some size up front, but we're just going to run it down your throats and, and try to stop us. So, again, you're, you're attacking the strength for the for the Corsairs on the defensive side, but, again, you don't have – doesn't sound like Eagles have many options. Four down linemen, three linebackers for the Corsairs. Motioning right is McKee, direct snap. Goes to McWillie. McWillie trying to make a cut off the right side. Stiff armed Forkner and then got absolutely level. Mason Pretty came up, delivered the blow from the safety spot. Flag comes in from the far sideline before the head. And might be if face mask hands to the face, not sure. Saw it looked like McWillie went for a stiff arm as he was going on the outside. So they might have got him tagged with the hands to the face or something. Again, I'm waiting the final call. They moved the flag to the 15. So it'll be a spot foul from there, and they're moving Holy the Siskiyou's back. Offense number 15. That penalty will be a first half of distance to the ball. Repeat second down. So they tag Craig Adera running back with a hold over the right side. So the inside the 20. Down. Move it back half the inside distance to the goal. Ends up being about a 7.5 yard penalty. And ball's back yard behind where the drive started. So second down and 11 from the eight yard line. Wind is calmed, rain is, rain is stopped. So we've got a, some clearing in the skies. A nice afternoon here. Direct snap, McWillie. McWillie stopped in the backfield, dropped down. Marcus Irby with the stop along with friends. And Jason White's gonna take a timeout with 2.58 to go.
away. They win this one, it'll be here at the Redwood Bowl on December 2nd. Haven't confirmed a time yet. If not, it will be on the road. Third and 12 upcoming. Motioning right is McKee. High snap, corralled by Johnson. Great save there as he goes over the right side. Hurdles a man and goes out of bounds. It'll give him a gain of seven. And they're going to say the clock keeps Johnson running. Nice play. Up a few, but not enough so a Coach White will take a timeout. Receivers coach. Timeout. Timeouts there by Coach Jason White. The Corsairs get the stop on third down. Fourth down, it will be Ryan Travis to punt it away. Pressure coming. He's able to get away in a good kick. Pretty at his own 50 and calls for the fair catch. Corsairs will take over on offense. They'll have two minutes. And whoever else is the back next to the one who gets the direct snap. Now it's Huff coming the other way. Hand off Levi Cox Cooley. Hit in the backfield, and he's going to be dropped to the line of scrimmage. Guess who? Marcus Delgado again. And Delgado, Cox very with important. The Siskiyou's defense here today had his name called a lot and been in a lot of plays. That's how you get, it, get your name called out there. So Delgado, impressive showing from the linebacker spot for him. And he's kind of, maybe not single-handedly, give a lot of credit to the front three, but able to slow down the Corsair run game. They'll go empty now with Huff, three receivers left. Right hash, Huff looking, he's going to find a man on the crossing route, and a little bit too low intended for Tyler Haskell. He's running a drag route, and Huff just threw in the dirt. So that's going to bring up third down and nine. Again, Corsairs haven't been able to get much going on the ground, and the pass game hasn't really come together. In the, in the last couple of games, it's really been a team that, and this is what they wanted from the start of the year, but it wasn't quite there, was the run to set up the pass. And Corsairs have been doing that effectively, but unable to get the run game going. Pass game hasn't gotten going much either. 7 nothing Corsairs, 2-10 to go, Huff empty. Huff. Pressure coming up the middle. Guess who? Delgado. And he's got to throw it away. And Huff is intercepted. Intercepted at the 33-yard line. It was Adrian Barnett. Defensive back came over and picked it off. And it was Marcus Delgado, big linebacker, number 44, coming up the middle, putting the pressure on Huff. So a team that is 21 interceptions on the season so far and hadn't had that many going the other way. Max Huff throws one at the end of the first half. And... Siskiyou's now going to have an opportunity. Now they got two minutes and no timeouts and no aerial attack. So we'll see what they try to scheme up here to get some points. Again, 7 nothing favor of the Corsairs. Two minutes to go. Coming up at halftime, it'll be Liam Warner. And you'll hear his interview pregame with Coach Jason White. We'll run that back. Direct snap goes Tyler Johnson over the right side. Johnson trying to find some running room, and he's going to be... Takes Gabe Ward for a ride, and what looked like a gain of two or three ends up being a gain of seven. So hard running from Johnson. Gets an extra three to four yards out of that one. Second down and three, minute 45 on the game clock. 
Balls at the own 42 for the Eagles. Got to get to the 44 for a first down. Or 58 yards for the end zone. Snap, Johnson, right side, hard runner. Man, he just puts his shoulder down and just says, hey, if there's nothing there, I'm going to try to get it. So Johnson he picks up three, like clock stops for the first down. first down. And they'll wind it. Again, they wind it pretty quickly. So the chains haven't even moved yet. Finally getting reset now, but the clock's winding. About a minute 10 to go. And just getting the play call in is Brett McKee, running back operating as the, I would assume, emergency quarterback here today. Ball spotted at the 44-yard line. McKee under center. Motions left. Direct snap over the head. Nobody thought the ball was coming. Tyler Johnson missed it. Scooped up by Brent Stetter. 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Corsairs. <laughs> And an offense that is, it's a little bit tricky under center as a gun. They've already had some mistakes. None of the running backs in the shotgun knew the ball was coming. Tyler Johnson was looking straight ahead. The ball was five yards behind him. Lane Brandstetter saw it, scooped it, and scored. So this defense able to convert as the first half winding down. 48 seconds to go. Brandstetter takes it in for six. And again, Corsairs, by way of the turnover, able to create some points. Daniel Gonzalez on to kick the PAT. Good snap. Kick from Gonzalez is up and through. Lane Brandstetter, 27 yards, scoop and score. 48 seconds to go, first half. Corsairs, team struggling to get going, really just swoop some momentum there coming into halftime. Short kick fielded by Jarvis McHire. He's trying to fight back. Flag comes in. That's going to be against Siskiers, block against uh, Levi Nyberg there. So, again, Eagles, no timeouts. Probably just going to try to run out the remainder of the first half and get to halftime with a 14 to zero lead. I mean, if they had been able to hold on to the ball there, they were looking at a one score Curve. game going into the half. Number four the return team. Now from the spot of the five. First down, Siskiyou. So rough couple plays for Tyler Johnson. He gets tagged with the block in the back there, and he was the one who was supposed to be getting the snap then. A little bit on the center there, a lot, of, a lot on the center there. But it went over Tyler Johnson's head, and he had no clue the ball was coming. So he was just kind of looking around like, what's going on? Ball's five, seven yards behind him, and Brent Setter able to beat him to it and get it in the end zone. That's where we are, 14 nothing. in final 42 seconds. Interesting use of timeouts early on. Eagles had no timeouts to get into the final four minutes. Used them all earlier in the quarter. Quarterback sneak. Okay, so now maybe I'm thinking this is by design. This is the second time that they've run the quarterback sneak with just the center and McKee going forward. Nobody else moves on the line. Almost like it's a soft count, or yeah, no count, uh, silent count, excuse me. Trying to go ahead and get the sneak. So uh, play call that I haven't seen before. As we're gonna let the game clock run down, game clock less than the play clock. And we will take it to halftime. So score remains at the half, Corsair's 14. Eagles Zero be back in two minutes with Liam Warner to bring you halftime stats and updates. You're listening to Corsair Football, ESPN, 107.3 FM, 1340 AM.
40 seconds. Ryan Thomas on to kick things off 30. for the second half. Ryan Thomas boots it away. We are underway. Second half of action. Corsairs, Eagles as the return man going over the right side. Jarvis McKire brought down just short of the 25-yard line. So, again, a reminder, Eagles won the toss to their option in the second half. They get the ball to start take over at the 23-yard line. Again, Liam Warner just reminding you at the half, Emmanuel Guanabom. Coaches for a college of the Siskiyous came up with. Under center, moving left is McKee. They're going to give it right to McWillie, and he's brought down in the backfield. Loss on the play, and it's Mo Leatawa again. I mean, huge game against Gavilan, and then he had you know a couple impact plays here early, but he's really come on these last couple games. Yeah, he's been really good. I mean, the CR defense has played really well. You know, it, you, you don't want to tell a, your defense at, or, or your offense, say, hey, you know, 14 points is all you need. <laughs> the defense is going to take care of the rest. But in, in reality, it kind of feels like it's going to be <laughs> one one of those games where, I mean, this should be a good enough cushion to ride it out the rest of the way, just based on the way that Siski, the Siskiyou's offense has been playing so far. McKee motions to the right behind the tackle. High snap, corralled there by Crane. Crane goes up the middle, but met by Steubing, Pretty, and a host of other Corsair tacklers and gain goes for one or two back to the original line of scrimmage. Again, just underway, second half of action here. Redwood Bowl, 14 0 in favor of the Corsairs, just under 14 to go, just started the third quarter. And a reminder after this game, we're going to send it live at the conclusion of this one to Lumberjack Arena, where it'll be the voice of the Lumberjacks, JV Mathers. Bringing you a couple back-to-back -back games. The men tip off at 3.30 against Cal State Maritime. And the women follow at 5.30 tonight. And they host Concordia University. Direct snap to, not to McWillie. McWillie was the lead blocker there. It was Tyler Johnson who got the carry. And he rushes for no gain. And punt team on the field. For the Eagles, so a quick three and out. Corsair is going to get the ball back, and Liam. I mean, you'd have to assume that they're going to make some second half adjustments defensively to load the box. You know, I mean, you, you really don't need hardly any safeties in this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, you can be effective with with an offense like this, the ground and pound, but they really just have not done a whole lot.
regular season game for the Corsairs. And looking to improve to 8-2 on the season and get a home bowl game. Again, that'll be December 2nd. Good snap. Pressure coming. But able to get it away is Travis. Good bounce for the Eagles. It's down inside the 50. Goes out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. And Max Huff. to get the run game going a little bit more here. Cox Cooley gets it on the inside, trying to cut back over the left and makes his way back towards the middle of the field. Gain of seven on the carry. Cox so the Levi field. Cox Cooley able to get a good gain and second and short coming up. We've got a timeout for an injury on the field and uh-oh, it's Marcus Delgado. Huff in the gun, Iguanabom the lone back behind him. He's got three receivers left. Handoff goes to Iguanabom. He's got room to run across the 50, across the 45. Keeps on churning his legs down to the 40 before he's finally wrestled down at the 39-yard line. So Delgado goes out for a play and biggest run of the day follows for the Corsairs. I think that is a little bit of correlation there. Yeah, I mean, Emmanuel Bonaguan, but this feels like a, a breakout game for him. I mean, he's had some good games this season, but just the amount of room he's had, uh, you know, just sliding through that uh, Siskiyou's defense, he's had a great day so far. Time of possession has been dominated by Siskiyou. I'd like to see the offense on the field for several more plays if you're a Corsairs fan. Snap, play action for Huff. Looking right, he's going to take a shot downfield. Wide open is Aguirre! Oh! Touchdown, Corsairs! Flag down in the backfield. So it was a play action rollout. Anthony Aguirre, defender fell down. He had plenty of space, wasn't overthrown. We get the call. And the signal is personal foul roughing the passer. So I'm guessing they'll be able to either take that one on the PAT if they wanted to go half the distance or the kickoff. Not sure about the technicality there. Jason White's going to talk with the referee. Figure out. They both sh shrug their shoulders at each other. He doesn't really care how it gets assessed. So it's Corsair strike for six. Right arm of Max Huff to Anthony Aguirre. And Corsairs extend their lead 20 to nothing. PAT upcoming. Yeah, that deep pass connection between Huff and Aguirre has just been so great all season. <laughs> And Huff really just knows he can throw it up to Aguirre, and Aguirre can go get it wherever he is. Ryan Thomas on to kick the PAT. Line drive kick is... from
lead at 28 nothing due to the Corsairs. And big kick from Ryan Thomas goes into the end zone. It's going to be returned to halfway deep. And across the 25, tripped up at the 25 yard line. Ryan return man, Juan Po. So, and, and Liam, we've talked about it here and there throughout the season, but I want to give a lot of credit to Ryan Thomas this year and the job that he's done, not only in the in the kicking game with like PATs and field goals, but also the ability to get a touchback and kick the ball out the end zone. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, if you remember if earlier in the season, we were talking about how last season the, the Corsairs did not have a single field goal all season. And, and Ryan Thomas already has a bunch of field goals um, obviously, the kickoff game is strong, but the punting, too. He has been a really good punter. It seems like yeah. he gets off a strong punt just about every time with pressure in his face. Even. Direct snap this time. Goes to Skyler Crane and going right. Not much there. Flag comes down in the backfield. Loss of three as it stands, pending the penalty. I was just about to say, Liam, what area of the field is that in? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, okay, loss of three. And uh, I believe Coach White will decline it Please. in favor of a down. The penalty is declined. So it is play. a holding Second call. Down. So I was thinking about it, Liam. We've got to do this for next year, but I've got to put something out there. I know that there's a lot of families of players and, you know, other people who are affiliated with the program. And then also, you know, anybody just locally who's tuning in. But I've got to come up with a system. I know JB does something on Twitter to let you know where you're listening from. But I would really love to hear where, where everybody's listening from, the fans throughout this season. I mean, shout out to all the families following along through, through us. As direct snap goes to McWillie, and he's just eating up. Jaden Sandusky almost beat the snap to him there. And he celebrates in the backfield, losses six. But, yeah, just, I mean, I see our families throughout the season. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for the opportunity. Obviously, our first season doing this together. But just the ability to kind of, you know, bring people who are farther away into the game while also getting in, you know, experience for us to get in around the around the football, around this team, around the program. It's been great to, you know, talk with players and coaches and travel on the road with them throughout the season. Yeah, it's been an absolute privilege. I mean, I've, I've had a blast. It's been really fun. I mean, the road games are great because, you know, we are with the team the entire time. And, yeah, it's, it's been awesome all the way through. And another negative play in the backfield is a direct snap. This time went to Crane. And three plays, three negative plays. Eagles go in the wrong direction. Started out at the 26-yard line. And they're going to be punting for their own 18. Yeah, I mean, uh, just there's not really a whole lot of creativity on, on the offensive side of the ball for the Eagles. And, I mean, as we've been talking about, it's tough when – um, obviously, they're in a situation where you know both of their regular quarterbacks are out, and so they have an emergency, you know, rotating emergency quarterbacks who are basically the running backs and have to figure something out in the past week. High snap, and it's wrangled in by Travis at the goal line. Pressure coming, able to get it away. He was not hit, but he fell down on his own. Ball bounces down, takes an Eagles bounce from their own 45, all the way across about 20 yards and roll. Is <laughs> you got the Eagles players. Kind of blowing with their arms on the football like they're going to roll it further. That was that was Gennario Renina or Rania, excuse me, who was doing that. So, a little bit of help from the win, a little bit of a nice bounce, but what looked to be a short punt ends up getting an extra 20 yards. Corsairs will take over at their own 34. Yeah, that was a really good punt given the circumstances. Absolutely, I mean, high snap, and it seems like on every single opposing punt, there are always a couple of Corsair defenders right there at the football. It's, it's really, I mean, I'm shocked they haven't gotten more blocked punts this season. I mean, so a really good punt. Huff in the gun, Cox Cooley to his left. Lopez comes across the formation. They give it to him on a speed sweep. Lopez trying to cut it up the field and wrestled down after a gain of four. So speedster Nate Lopez gets some action on the slot. And he's able to pick up five on the ground. Second down and five upcoming. Second down. Cox Cooley, Lopez head to the bench. Tyler Haskell, Levi Nyberg check into the game. We're at 8.40 to go. It's third quarter. Corsairs with a 28-0 lead. And it was a Guana Bomb on the ground. Brandstetter, fumble recovery for six. Huff to Aguirre through the air. And then O.J. Mosley scoop and score on another fumble. 
Haskell in motion, play action, going to take a deep shot and way over the head of his intended target, Jaden Burns. Tight end. Excuse me, that was Sean LaChapelle, I believe. 88 and 89 on those black jerseys, hard to tell the difference. Regardless, the pass goes incomplete. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Huff just took a shot a little bit too much on it. So third down and five upcoming. Ball spotted at their own 39-yard line for the Corsairs. They work left to right as we see it. Still a little bit of a breeze, but the rain's holding off for now. Huff in the gun. And fakes it to Nyberg. He's going to keep it up over the side. Huff puts his shoulder down and... Good enough for a first down. And then Huff's driven back and slung to the ground way after the whistle. He's got several offensive linemen coming to his defense. Again, good job by the Corsairs able to not incite anything, you know, and, and react there. They've got enough on the ground with the first down. So a little bit of a zone read there for Huff. He made the right read and kept it and moves the chains. Max Huff, I mean, his ability to just get physical and take on hits is, is really something incredible to watch. And I'm sure that... You know, if you're, you're on the coaching staff of this Redwoods team, you get a little nervous when he's putting his helmet down and just taking on defenders like that. But, I mean, you, it, it, you really earn the, the respect of the rest of your teammates as a quarterback when you're able to do things like that. Off in the gun. This time he gives it, and it's a reverse coming back the other way to Haskell. Lee blocking Huff, and Haskell able to get across the 50-45, still being pushed. He's going to be marked down just short of the line gate. It looked like he had an open seam there. Good job defensively. I believe it was Yapo. Excuse me, one of their defensive linemen was able to ring him up. And a timeout. It's an injured eagle down on the field. We'll the injury timeout play action for Max Huff he was looking for Sean LaChapelle down the field got tangled up with the defensive back went down and a flag came in right down at the 12 yard line so looks to be a pass interference call against pass interference. Eagles defense number 10 15 yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down 15 free yards for the Corsair offense Puts them all the way down at the 30-yard line. Take over, first down and 10. Again, Corsairs, 28-0 lead. Two offensive, two defensive touchdowns here today. Huff in the gun, hard count, and <laughs> top of the... So nobody moved on the line, which is usually where you see it with the hard count. It was the far side of the field, defensive back, lined up right across from the receiver and press coverage, just two hands right to the chest, right off the hard count. Repeat first down. Touch football there. So in case you couldn't tell, they're in press coverage already. So five more free yards. It's 20 yards in offensive or defensive, excuse me, penalties. And Corsairs get set up at their Eagles 25. It's 
Seth Hufford Purcell. And snap here, and it's going to be tossed out to the side. If it's six, it's Full Purcell. Start. Offense number 12. So we've got five free yards and it's going back the other way. Corsairs give it back on a false start. Let's see who they got there. You moved early. <laughs> hot mic. Care, careful for the hot mic if you're the referee. So five, five yards on defensive penalty, five yards offensive that's penalty. I think that's hot. We're back where we started, first down and ten. Max Huff's still the quarterback out there for the Corsairs. Second to try and find out if it was potentially get a soft, another sophomore quarterback, Shane Purcell, into the game here. 28-0, seven minutes to go, third quarter. Off standing at his own, or excuse me, at the Eagles. 25, hands it off for Arakawa on the left side. Kyrus Arakawa across the 20, and knocked out of bounds, but not before a good gain. As again, another guy honored on sophomore day. He <laughs> comes running off the field, signaling that he's eating right now. Yeah, Tyrus Arakawa, I mean, he has a large contingent of family members uh, sitting somewhere near us yeah. and during the sophomore day uh, celebrations. Uh, he got a very loud cheer when his name was announced. So great run uh, for him in front of his friends and family. Dude. So the run by Arakawa brings it down to the 16. Six and a half minutes to go. Corsair's 28-0. Snap to Huff, and he kept it, and the slot man got lit up as Huff's still churning at the five. So fly sweep, faked it to Tyler Haskell. Haskell took the brunt of that one. He didn't get the ball, and he got lit up. I mean, that fooled me up here, so that was a very good uh, execution of that play by the Corsairs and a great run by Huff up the middle. So Max Huff, a couple first downs using his legs. So far today, Corsair set up inside the five at the four yard line. First down and goal. Still three day defensive linemen for the course, or excuse me, for the Eagles. Huff goes under center, heavy set, three running backs behind him. Toss left. Cox Cooley trying to get the corner, puts his shoulder down and gets into the end zone. Wow, Levi Cox Cooley just went and took that one. Jarvis McKay had a line on him. And Levi Cox Cooley said, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, and I'm going to get into the end zone. Well, that's usually something you see Emmanuel Bonham do a max up. But, man, Levi Cox Cooley just put the hit stick on the defender right there. Beautiful watch. So they started at the right hash, close side of the field. They ran the sweep left. He's got two lead blockers. And then it was one-on-one -on, -one on the edge with the defensive back at the, about the one, two, one yard line. And Levi Cox Cooley said, I'm going to put my shoulder down. I'm getting into the end zone. So now Ryan Thomas on to try the point after. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it. Daniel Gonzalez kicking this one away. Shorter kick, fielded at the 15-yard line. And going out of bounds is McHire. Forced out and, ooh, get tackled into the kicking net. A little bit after the play. And able to get helped up. And Liam will give a lot of credit to the Corsairs and, and also to Sisters as well. But haven't seen a lot of, you know, back and forth, pushing and shoving, and, and some of the extracurriculars that we'd seen in, in some of the previous previous games i know and i think that's because if, if you've heard uh some of coach white's interviews the past couple of weeks i think he was talking about he, he upped the punishment uh for some of those uh personal fouls and unsportsmanlike conducts after the play and i think it's so what, uh, having you, an effect do you know what the the old one was was a hundred yard sprint right yeah and i think he upped it to 
300? I, oh, I, don't, I don't remember the specifics. Uh, you, I'd have to look back at the tape. But <laughs> Direct snap to McWillie, and he's tied up and brought down. Stopped in the backfield. Just a gain of three. Yeah, I mean, it, they've been very disciplined. I mean, it, the, the discipline really showed when Max Huff was thrown down to the ground after the play, and, you know, the, none of the Corsair linemen or anyone right. else, you know, got into it too much. Because, I mean, that's something that will get you going, is seeing your quarterback get thrown down to the ground after the play. Especially on your final regular season day. You don't yeah. want to be running, <laughs> running sprints in practice after after your regular season's over. Right. So there, there was one time on the road trip there, and, I know Liam, you know this already, but we're I didn't grab they, so they do like a, a per diem. It's like ten dollars. You, you get at the yeah. grab it at breakfast. Meal money exactly, and that's for your lunch later. So uh, as McKee goes under center here, direct snap goes to Crane. Crane trying to roll out to the right side, and oh man, just it's not looking pretty here at all. Just negative play, negative play, negative play. So obvious adjustments from Carl Wheeler. Um, but just going back to it, it was pretty funny because then I had to grab it from him after the game and I can't, can't remember exactly I think it was after DeAnza maybe in Cupertino but so, so I go I go up to him after the game and he's like hey coach can I grab it and I forgot it he goes well you know since you got it he goes alright so you know you sign, sign your name and whatnot, and then he goes alright so you got four 100s and I'll, I'll see you practice on Monday you gotta run for not grabbing your money on time <laughs> so, but okay okay so. Well, did you show up? No, no. <laughs> he didn't enforce it. So, I mean, right. if, if I'd gotten flagged or something, maybe for an unsportsman like during the game, I probably would have been there running I mean, with these guys. If we get too fired up, that could happen. <laughs> so, third and 23, direct snap goes to Crane, trying to find some running room. Nothing there. And he's swung down in the backfield. And I believe that's Jacob Wong Oliveris in there to make the stop. He's gotten some good minutes in crunch time. Excuse me, I want to give proper credit here. That was Devin Murphy with the tackle, because that was nice. That was one-on-one -on -one with Crane, and, you know, one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. Everybody was going right with the line, and he kind of tried to come back left, and Murphy just closed it, and beautiful open field tackle. So. Well, that's the one thing that the CR defense has done really well this year, in my opinion, is one-on-one -on -one tackling in space. I mean, they've been extremely good. Like I said earlier, there have not been too many missed tackles this season. Travis gets the kick away, and it's a good one. Fair catch called for and made inside the 50 at his own 30. Excuse me, 46 is Mason Pretty. quarterback or the punter or whatever the running back yeah <laughs> and off to guanabom up the middle he gets across the 50 good tough run in from emmanuel guanabom and he's good for five there and just to kind of go back liam i know i made the point about families listening all over mason pretty's dad came up and talked to us after uh one of the road games and you know said that their family appreciates listening to it. i want to give a shout out to my family i've got my sister lucia over in chicago who will oh, tune man. into the game? So I know, I know we're we're not just a local radio station. We're spread, spreading spreading our roots across the U.S. This ESPN Humboldt County is uh, going going uh, countrywide here. Oh yeah. Snap to Huff. Play action. He's going to roll out, directing traffic pressure coming. And guess who's back in the game? Marcus Delgado able to bring down Huff for a sack. Marcus Delgado. So Delgado has been the one of the. Lone Bryant's bright spots for this uh, Siskiyou's defense. A little tongue-tied, almost said Brian there, like we're talking Thanksgiving turkeys. <laughs> we're starting to think about that oh, already. <laughs> so third down and seven coming up. Ball spotted at the 50-yard line, far hash. Again, Corsairs left to right. Still windy out there, not a ton of rain. High snap, corralled by Huff, right side Nyberg. Nyberg cutting it upfield, and Levi Nyberg, third and seven, I'll take eight, and a first down. Yeah, Levi Nyberg, he's a guy that we didn't call his name too many times Levi in the season, but the last few games, he's really good. He's gotten several he's touchdowns and several field goals. Yeah. Great to see him break out. So Nyberg, <clears throat> good enough for a first down carry there, and 
Yeah, it's, a lot of credit has to go to the CR front five when you have one, two, three, four, five running backs score last week and just the efficiency on the ground game. This front five's really come together. As Nyberg gets, or excuse me, Arakawa gets another carry. Able to pick up two, but that was something we had talked about at the beginning of the year, Liam, was that this was a young offensive line. They had to learn to play together throughout the season, and we've seen it before our eyes. This went from a run game that was almost non existent to a record setting, like what, 273 yard performance yeah. from Levi Cox Cooley in a game at home, and then also, you know, just the, the, the ability to establish the run first to set up the pass has been. Uh, you know, monumental for this team. Yeah, just the growth over the season. I mean, they, right. frankly, they didn't look too good at the beginning of the season, but they've just gotten so much better. A couple hard counts from Huff, not going to phase the Siskiyou's defense. And the corners aren't playing press, so they can't give him with a little two-hand shove right now. Snap goes to Huff. Cox Cooley left side. He's got some room trying to cut up and swung around, but he stays on his feet. And finally corralled and brought down. Colt Oyster was one of the ones there. Made some contact, but Cox Cooley with a tough running, and that's going to wind us down to the end of the third quarter. Corsairs put up 21 in the third quarter and currently lead it 35 to nothing. Final 15 minutes of the. I don't think it's too soon. 35 nothing Corsairs. Handoff goes inside. Iguana Bomb looking to cut it back to the right. Stays on his feet, fighting for a first down. Finally slung down there. Gets the handoff. And Looks trying like to get a look at was Sia Takao, who was the one who was able to finally bring him down. So another conversion for the Corsairs. And the chains move. Iguana Bomb checks out. Nate Lopez into the game. 14 and a half minutes to go. And again, of course, there's if they win this one, they've got a home game December 2nd versus Hartnell. And that's the playoff. That's a bowl game. That'll be here at the Redwood Bowl. Again, pending the conclusion of this one. Handoff Nyberg, tough running. Levi Nyberg able to get five or six on the ground. Nyberg takes the handoff. Uh, it's a good Picks stable up rotation. Arakawa checks in. So it's Guadalbaum gets, gets a rep. Nyberg gets a rep. Cox Cooley gets a rep. Arakawa gets a rep. I mean, the only one we haven't seen yet um, they, that did score a touchdown in the previous game was, I believe, Daniel Garcia Hall. So second down and five up coming just under 14 minutes, fourth quarter. Corsairs 35 nothing. And Liam Warner, Mitchell Manji bringing you the rest of the way here. Man in motions, Carson Tucker gets it on the speed sweep. Good blocking, able to turn the corner. Carson Tucker, 25, 30, 20, 15, fighting and pulling his way down to the 10 yard line amidst a, an array of flags. So again, just a reminder, after this game, conclusion of uh, Corsairs and Eagles, we will send you live to Lumberjack Arena. To join the great J.B. Mathers. He's got a couple of games for you. two fouls on the play. As we get the call. Spoken by the offense. Holdy, offense number 30. That penalty is declined. Holdy, offense number 12. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Couple of holding calls against the Corsairs and cancel out the speed sweep one by Carson Tucker. And Corsairs again been keeping this one on the ground, trying to wrap it up. A, a you know a good successful season, trying to get to eight and two. Lone losses 
for the Foothill and West Hills Coalinga. Only loss at home was that West Hills game. That was a little bit unusual. It just didn't, something didn't feel right about that game. Coursers never really got it going. Offensively had a chance to come back and win it at the end. Um, game at Foothill was a little less close. Foothill kind of dominated that one in the trenches. A couple Division I players on that team. Motion across the formation. Give inside Cox Cooley. Cox Cooley's got room. Breaks a tackle. Cox Cooley. Ted tripped up. Wow. Touchdown saving tackle there on the outside. Cox Cooley with another great run. By Lance Stewart. So Stewart able to save a touchdown and keeps the Corsairs out of the end zone, but sets him up with a first and goal. As Carson Tucker comes back in. Local kid, Arcata High product. Speaking of our next, uh, our bowl game opponent, Hartnell, they are currently trailing San Jose 13 to seven at the start of the fourth quarter. Remember the Corsair team that beat San Jose in their first road opener, that was 42-21. Snap, handoff, Carson Tucker, they're trying to get him in the end zone, he cuts back and he is in for six. Got called back due to holding. They set him up inside with first and goal from the eight. Give it right back to him, and he's able to get in and score. And again, Tucker, although he's been you know out of high school for two years, is a redshirt freshman, so he'll give an opportunity to play again next season. But good to see him get an opportunity to get, to get in the end zone. Thomas on to attempt the PAT. Good snap, kick from Thomas, up and in. Conclusion of this one, and I'll be joining Jamie Mathers on Tuesday against Northwest Indian College as the kick away from Thomas handled at the three. Brought out by Poe. Pro's got a room to cut back across the 30 and finally dragged down the 35 yard line. So while we've got a second, let's go ahead and take our sponsors who have been with us throughout the entire season. Big shout out to these guys at Alves Inc. The handyman service from McKinley Valley's Home and Garden. Summit Funding, Bear River Casino, ABC Roofing and Solar, and Stewart Telecommunications. They're the ones who make this broadcast possible. So a huge shout out to them. And as we've already gone over the look ahead for the Corsairs, we'll take a look here at the Cal Poly men's basketball, women's basketball in just a second as we're going to get a little bit of a counter play coming back around the other side. 50, 40, 20. Nobody's going to catch him into the end zone. Gennaro Reyna. Gennaro Reyna gets the handoff. Got a flag back at the line of scrimmage. It was a direct snap. Ran it right, and Reyna came around the backside, caught it on the reverse. It was and just flipped the field. And that's just going to be a huge bummer for a team that can't have a ton of explosive plays, just the way that their offense is designed. So the holding call goes against Ralph St. Fleur, offensive lineman, and that takes what was six off the board. Yeah, that's crushing. I mean, you know, even if you're down 42 to nothing, to have a play like that, I mean, put some charge in your sideline and very deflating to have that taken away. I mean, it's happened to the Corsairs several times where big plays happen 
So 10 yard penalty, ball was at the 35, it's gonna move back to the 25, first and 20 upcoming for the Eagles. Scoreboard stays clean. Coach Wheeler's defense trying to have eight quarters of shutout ball to finish the season. Direct snap goes to McWillie, comes up the middle, OJ Mosley in there. On the stop, again, O.J. Mosley picked up a touchdown, fumble, and returned it for a touchdown. To go ahead and take a little look ahead. Coming up, again, 3.30, Cal State Maritime and Cal Poly Humboldt. And the women are going to play second tonight as they host Concordia University Irvine. And looking ahead for the men, they've got a game Tuesday, 5 o'clock at home against Northwest Indian College. That'll be myself along J.B. Mathers bringing you the call. Liam will be traveling for Thanksgiving. As direct snap, again goes to McWillie, excuse me, to Johnson. Tyler Johnson over the right side gets across the 30, so it'll give him a gain of three, gonna bring up third down and 14. I'll be back in the studio for the Friday, Saturday games for the women. Right. To that. So that's what, let's see, so then you've got an away game the day after Thanksgiving, so the 24th is at Azusa Pacific for the women. Then they have a neutral game against Biola on the 25th. Then the men's side, it's the Tuesday game. Then they don't have a game until the 30th when they tip off the conference season. Uh, both men and women on November 30th. Women start at 5.30, men at 7.30. And again, I'll have the call with J.B. Mathers. That weekend, December 2nd, is going to be just like this, full of action across the North Coast. We'll have a bowl game for you, followed by a couple start of conference basketball play. As direct snap to Johnson goes nowhere. Rain's starting to come down. And, excuse me, McWillie. Hard to tell the difference between those two. Both dynamic hard runners, about the same size. Now one's number four, one's 24, so you just get a peek of it. It's hard, hard, hard to see exactly. But fourth and 15, nonetheless, and Eagle's going to have to kick this one away. And Pretty was out there to return. He gets... He gets pulled off. He's not not super excited about not returning, but it's Lane Brandstetter who's going to get the opportunity. He's probably thinking, hey, Lane's already got a touchdown on defense. i got to get one here in the return game. I want to get some out there. Come yeah, on. exactly. So Pretty takes a seat. Brandstetter out. High snap corralled by Travis. And pressure almost got there, but able to get it away as it's fielded at 38-yard line. Fair caught by Brandstetter. Fair catch. yard line fourth quarter they're moving right to left motion man Jasper Hostler catches it or excuse me La Chapelle gets dragged down after a gain of one trying to get him going on the speed sweep action Everhart's in at quarterback La Chapelle over the outside picks up about one so Sean was the only wide receiver I believe who didn't nine. score last game they got Hostler a touchdown Jasper and Gire caught a couple. Lopez got in there. Carson Tucker wasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, didn't travel last weekend, but he was able to get one today. Okay, as you mentioned, Liam Everhart in at quarterback. Takes the snap, hands it off inside. Rush picks up two. Jordan Bowers, Jordan Bowers his first action. He had a touchdown in the last game. I, Bowers was the one I was trying to think of earlier, not Garcia Hall, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. As one who got into the end zone. I think Garcia Hall was the one who wasn't did not score, but they did have five running backs get into the end zone. So, Nonetheless, third down and eight coming up. 8.45 to go, fourth quarter, 42-0 Corsairs. Everhart in the gun. Brings Hurt in motion across the screen. Handoff goes to Hurt. Hurt trying to turn the, turn the corner, and not much there. He gets forced out of bounds, tackled onto the track on the far side of the field. 
Can't feel great. Loss of two on the carry. Brings up fourth down and ten. Hunt team on for CRs. They're going to have two weeks now to prepare. For a Hartnell team, it's most likely going to have to go on the road again. Last we checked the score, that one was 13-7 in favor of San Jose. Remaining 13-7, 6.55 left. And almost at the same spot here. Ryan Thomas gets away a line drive. He got drilled at the end of that one. And... windy it is right here Liam you can I mean you can hear it a little bit through the microphones but when you look down coach White's got his play sheet like clipped to his waistband and it's just blowing around like a flag going full blast so yeah, I've been seeing that yeah it's down on the field right a lot windier than it yeah, feels it, up here I'm well, sure when you look at the top of the redwoods and they're swaying a little bit but then you get down on the field and it's really blowing and yeah, there are no flags up on the flagpole to discern the wind there there's a couple flags on the field though yeah <laughs> that is true. The, the wind's not strong enough to blow those around, though. So still getting this one sorted out. Again, we had a Ryan Thomas, the punter, went down on the kick, hit the gritty, and drew another flag. So the guess is since that's after the play, that's going to be at the conclusion of it. The question is, was it roughing or running into? Coach White's yelling offense to his field, so it sounds like it's a roughing call. So they're going to get 15 auto first down, and then they would move back. 15 from there. I'm again not a referee, so I'm not 100% certain if it would be first and 25 or first and 10 still. But it's taken a, quite a bit of time to get this one sorted out. And then, of course, their offense huddling up there on the sideline. It seemed like the coach for Siskiyou wasn't too happy about something. I would be happy if I was losing 42 to nothing either. <laughs> yeah top of that yeah <laughs> especially if uh after the whole sequence of events cr is going to end up keeping the ball most likely <clears throat> offense has now come off the field so again still waiting a conclusion on this one i know is we're going to send it to uh jb later J jb is a big fan of uh replay replay time and getting calls right oh man i, I love listening to him when <laughs> they coded the monitor over and over you had a conference well, two fouls on the play running into the kicker defense at the end of the play dead ball unsportsmanlike conduct taunting number 49 that's 49's first yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game a subsequent unsportsmanlike will result in disqualification It'll be a five-yard penalty for the end of the kick, and then we'll assess the 15-yard dead ball pass. All right, so the five-yard is a running into, so that'll be tacked on. They'll move <laughs> crazy. So you, you, you've got the punt gets away. It was fair caught. Then you're going to go five yards backwards for running into the kicker, and then no, from there you go 15 yards forwards okay. for the taunting call against Thomas. Yeah. So. After all that, and the referees get it sorted out, ball's going to be spotted at the 39-yard line, left hash, first and 10, Siskiyou's. Not the first time there have been a bunch of flags on the field and we're left scratching our heads as to <laughs> how, how it's going to be enforced in the end. Direct snap, Tyler Johnson. Johnson up the middle, getting some push from his offensive lineman, trying to get a couple more. They're going to blow this one dead. Gain of two on the play. Seven and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. Corsairs 42 to nothing here over College of the Redwoods. Let's 
Second down and eight. Again, I uh, do not believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Liam, don't think I am, but College of the Siskiyous has not attempted to pass today. No, they have not. I mean, it's, it, it looks like we're watching uh, Army-Navy out here just on one side of the football. Direct snap this time, and they're going to run the reverse back to the opposite side of the field. Not as much success as the previous. It was Craig Adairna. Carry able to pick up three. So third down and five. Third down and six upcoming after the subsequent carries. And again, mentioned it a little bit earlier, but injury to the starting quarterback, Waste Solushkin. And so uh, Siskiyous has opted to go running back by committee type for quarterback. Yeah, de facto quarterback. Brett McKee is the one who calls the plays. He lines up under center, shifts left or right, and you get a direct snap to usually Tyler Johnson or Demetrius McWillie. And this time, direct snap goes to Marcus Ledesma. Got some... First carry for him in the second half, and he goes backwards for a loss of three. So Reese Hare, who was able to get the stop in the backfield. Fourth down and eight for the Eagles, and punt team is on, and it's Mason Pretty to receive. Pretty standing at his own 28. Pressure coming, got the kick away. The spiral, Pretty going to catch it at his own 25. Corsairs will take over. Nyberg takes the handoff over the outside. Picks up about seven. Hunter Everhart is the new quarterback. In First play from field. scrimmage is a handoff to Levi Nyberg. He goes out of bounds, but gets a gain of seven. As with five minutes to go, fourth quarter, Corsairs putting the finishing touches on this one. Currently late at 42 0. Hunter Everhart in for the offense, his second possession of the game. He gives a hard count, no jump, hand off right, Jordan Bowers. Jordan Bowers cuts it back, and he's got room to go. Across the 40, finally dragged down at the 43-yard line. First down and more for Jordan Bowers. A lot of different guys get reps these past couple of games. Talked about it in October. The opportunity to close out with three dominant wins against Teams that have struggled against Siskiyous. Good game last week, but without their starting quarterback today, I've not been able to put anything together on offense. Everhart in the gun. He's got trips left. And hard count, hard count, hard count. And finally, when he went to snap it, no, a little bit of confusion. Ball start. Offensive line. <laughs> so, I talked earlier. They, they do, when, so when they snapped it to the center, it was like, okay, live play. Nobody else moved on the Siskiyou side. Then they did it again. It was like, okay, this kind of seems like it's by design. I asked Coach Helms if he'd seen anything like that at halftime. He's like, eh, no, I don't, I don't think I'd run that play either. <laughs> but on this side, it's uh, the entire offensive line gets the false start call. So Confusion nonetheless. First and 15, four minutes to go. Corsairs lead it by 42. Trying to pitch a second shutout in a row after not having one through their first eight games. Counterplay, handoff at Guantanamo, and he's wrapped up, brought down in the backfield. Nice tackle there by Keyshawn Thomas. So Thomas able to break through and wrap up in Guantanamo. wrapped up in the background by number 38, Keyshawn Thomas. Loss of six on the play, five or six. So 
Second down and 20. Eberhardt in the gun at his own 29. He's got three receivers right, one left. Bowers the back. Gives it to Bowers. Bowers cutting on the right side and able to pick up nine before he's brought down by Marcus Salgado. And Liam, I mean, Siskiyou's again, they've allowed 42 well, points. Two of them have been, you know, two defensive penalties. But you got to give a ton of credit to Marcus Delgado on the defense for, for Siskiyou's. I mean, this is a guy who's just knows for the football. He's in every single play almost. Yeah, I mean, there are guys, you know, on the Siskiyou's defense are playing their hearts out. and got to give a ton of credit to them. And off left side, Arakawa. Flag comes in, puts his shoulder down, and he's finally wrestled down. Andre Estrada. Arakawa on the make carry. A tackle. Flag came in. It was down. holding, which it looks to be. You have an option at a third and 21 or a fourth and eight if you're the Eagles. Yeah, if you're the CR coaching staff and you're going to nitpick you know, things from this game, I mean, the penalties have been Office a little bit high. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, fourth down. Yeah, you figure, regardless, Corsairs are going to punt there. Don't want to give them an opportunity to get it. Again, so, here comes Ryan Thomas, the gritty man himself. <laughs> I think that was an unfair flag, if you're asking my opinion. I want to find out what happened, because Jaden Sandusky came up to him. It looked like he was giving him a hard time, but then at the end, it kind of looked like he was seriously a little irked that he got the penalty. Fair catch signaled. Uh, ball bounces, takes a big CR bounce, and drops back. I don't know why they were rushing to pick that up, uh, but Sandusky and Ward right there. and. County and elsewhere and I mean just every part of the team is really strong direct snap goes to Tyler Johnson over the left side able to pick up five and this is I mean you talked about it early on but just the strength of the defense coach Wheeler watching him as he coached up at Humboldt and you know obviously there's you as a fan like there's the frustration side of it but it's it's it is awesome to see him get this opportunity and see him elevate this defense yeah, such a high level. I love Coach Wheeler. I mean, you know, I, I always had a lot of respect for him. You know, going here to Humboldt State and watching him as the final head coach at the HSU football program and the job that he did there. Direct snap goes to Crane. Crane trying to get the right side. And leveled and dropped. Big hit there at the end, but that's enough for a first down. Crane just, you know, the position that Coach Wheeler was in, was I mean, it, 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 I asked him this, you know, several weeks ago, but it, it just must be so weird, you know, being the, the head coach of a football program that's going to be shut down. And, you know, the way he handled it um, in 2018, I believe, was just a really good, very professional, and he's brought that here to uh, the CR defense. Direct snap goes to Johnson. They're going to try the reverse coming the other way with Reyna. And after the first time they got the touchdown that was called back due to holding, there's trying to run it two times more to no avail. Yeah. No, Lost defense, fun. they're smart. I mean, they're not going to get beat like that two times more. Braden Snodderly. Well, Braden Snodderly getting into the game. A couple of tackles for him on back-to-back -back plays. And somebody who was an important part with injuries earlier on in the, in the season. Missing a couple linebackers. Snodderly, somebody who stepped up. I haven't seen as much time recently. Able to get back out there. Fourth quarter today. Again, 42 0 Corsairs. Direct snap. Tyler Johnson going over the right side. Johnson's got a first down and more. Johnson wrestled down as he gets across the 30 yard line. Arnold Dilworth, the one to finally bring him down. Chains move. Eagles going to go with a little bit of tempo. They're, they want to try to get one in the end zone, obviously. Ball spotted at the 30, 20 seconds to go, clock running. 
Direct snap goes Johnson again. Johnson over the right side, cuts across the 25. And it's marked down at Johnson the... Johnson again up the middle. Oh, mark him down at the 25, and that will be... Never mind. Timeout from the Siskiyou sideline. And they're going to try a... one will be a 42-yarder. Ryan Travis. And hard count, they got the Corsairs. Oh my goodness. Something that Max Huff has been so successful at all season long. So, obviously you know that the Corsair is going to try to preserve the shutout. They want to try and block it. But... <laughs> Get a little bit of a hard count there. Get five free yards because 42 is a long kick. Rain's coming down now. You can see the rain and the lights um, kind of swirling around. There's not really a definite direction to this. I've never felt so much tension <laughs> for a field goal when one team's up 42 to nothing. Yeah, no kidding. Five, defense number 25. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So five yards. 5.2 seconds remaining. Okay, we'll up to the yeah, so coaching staff's clearing out the booth. This one's already over. It's just a matter of whether there's back-to-back -back shutouts for the Corsairs. Sidelines fired up. Ryan Thomas, most exciting kick of the day. Kick is up, and it is no good. And time will expire. Back-to-back -back shutouts for the Corsairs. The still going the last play of the game beautiful. is no like good. The way this team has played, the, the way they played today, the way they played all season. A final really looking forward to the full game zero. in a couple weeks' time. So again, coming up next. Now, Pauly oh Humboldt basketball coming up. Um, I believe Laura back in the studio is going to do the transfer for us. So just want to take a, a quick second here to say some thank yous. Obviously, 